Well, the interesting thing, it, it seems that it does. Um, one of the leading placebo researchers called Fabrizio Benedetti has worked on placebo control of pain, and he's shown very, very strong effects. I mean, pain can be just wiped out by, uh, by a fake medicine or fake injection. Um, when he himself makes himself the subject of his own experiment, uh, he's, he's, he's given pain by, by a tourniquet or whatever it may be. Um, I mean, real vicious pain, stabbing him in his arm. He asks for the placebo to be injected. He knows it's a placebo and it still works. I find that very, very well, hard. It's to... very puzzling, isn't yeah. it? But I mean, I've talked to him about it, and we think it's because he, if anybody, has the best evidence there is that placebos work. He, yes, he, he knows it. He knows yes. these things work, and therefore, at some level, he's doing the sensible thing, which is, uh, which, which is responding to the fact that the pain, everything, all the evidence is the pain will be reduced by by the, this procedure even if he knows at another level in his head uh, what the mechanism is. And even be. if you also know the Darwinian rationale, that might it also make it more effective. Yeah, well, it might be, yes. Mm. Um, it's, uh, it's an interesting issue, this, because some people have suggested that if and when we discover a particular treatment or a drug as a placebo, um, we ought either to withdraw it or at least to tell the patient that this is a placebo. Um, it's possible that it would be perfectly or, uh, effective to, to tell the patient, not wouldn't use the word placebo, but that this treatment will work. We've got all lots of evidence that, that it works for many other cases. Um, although at the moment we've got no reason to believe that it's affecting your, your body physiologically or, or, or in terms of its biochemistry directly. So we don't understand how this works, but we know it, the evidence is that it does. And it'll probably still work. Yeah. Patients don't have to believe that the mechanism is understood for this to work. I, can I switch to the to the dark side a bit? Because there, there is surely a risk that um, th this kind of um, reliance on placebo and faith and faith healing and so on could lead people to abandon or not go in for orthodox medicine when they really do need an operation or they really do need antibiotics or something. Yes, or whether, or whether the, the, the lump on their face is actually a malignant yes. um, uh, tumour or whatever it may be. Yes, no, that's a very important point to make. I mean. Insofar as we put our hands into the, uh, uh, so insofar as we put ourselves into the hands of non-experts who aren't trained medically, they may miss things which it's very important that we know about and act on urgently in the conventional medical way. So um, that's that's that that's a, a worry. I I don't think I mean there's a lot of evidence that that's that's been a problem. People who go to alternative healers mostly know that for certain sorts of things um, they know where to go for those. They, they go to the emergency ward or they go to the GP. Um, of course the Jehovah's Witnesses and other religious cranks who will, you know, for, on, for religious grounds not accept treatment of a conventional kind. But, um, and worse, make a, their, yeah. prevent their children. Yeah, but yeah. Those, I mean, those are relatively rare. I think, mm. I think on the whole a lot of alternative medicine is fairly benign. It's very expensive. Um, it's uh, I, I don't know what the actual budget of going out on, on, to see, on alternative medicine is, but it's it's vast. Presumably, um, the more you pay, the more effective it is. Well, <laughs> that's been established for a long time in psychotherapy. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. um, but it's uh, so it's you know people are, are perhaps you know misusing their financial resources, even if they're using their healing resources very well. Um, if they could get the treatment for nothing on the NHS and they choose to pay £100 an hour to see an alternative practitioner, well, that's their choice. But, um, you know, on the whole, alternative medicine is a disease, I can put it, of the affluent. Um, uh, <laughs> yes. I suppose an implication of all this is that the idea of placebo controls in double-blind trials becomes a little bit odd. And it's a, in the case of alternative medicine, yes, I think it is. And when medical authorities want to reject alternative therapies because they don't do any better than placebos, of course they're just missing the point. If the alternative therapy is working through the placebo effect, then it'll work just as well as a, as a placebo itself, um, but probably no better. But the relevant control would be no treatment at all. And then again and again, when these therapies are tested against having no treatment at all, they turn out to be really, really quite effective. Nevertheless, I sort of have a sort of hankering after what's actually true. And so if somebody claims that their bottle of medicine um, works because it 
I don't know, because it's homeopathic or because it's um, quantum healing or because something like that. Um, I, I positively want a placebo control um, in, in order to show that, well, they're, that they're, they're deceiving us. No, I think it's, I mean, we, as scientists, we might want to know if there is something going on in alternative therapy which is over and above the placebo effect. Conceivably, there might be, and I agree. Of course, it would be very interesting to know what it was. But that doesn't mean, from the point of view of medical practice, that we should we should try and ban these or, or, or persuade people not to go to these, these healers. And the other thing to say about alternative medicine is that, I mean, it's not all just about medicine or healing either. I mean, people, it, it's part of the whole social fabric of p connecting to people and, and part of you know, what people get from a session with a, with a healer is a sense of self-importance. So they, and they enjoy it. They enjoy the interaction. Oh, yeah. I mean, mm. I mean it, they do a lot of other things which don't do them any good at all, like you know, going to cinema or football matches just for the sake of pleasure. Why not go to your doctor, yeah. at least partly for the entertainment value? And I think it's not quite that, but if you can get some, uh, you know, if you can do yourself good at, in terms of your health at the same time, you know, why not? It's, uh, we, shouldn't, we don't want to police the system and try and you know, ban these things because as scientists we can say that people are being deluded. Going back to the idea that to the placebo control for a moment, Pharmaceutical companies have to do that because yes. they actually have to show that, uh, to, to, to justify, I suppose, the, the large sums of money that they're spending on developing yes. medicines. And so, um, they, we, why should it be one rule for them and, and another rule? Why, why should they have to subject themselves to the discipline of a placebo-controlled double-blind trial? Uh, because uh, if if they are not doing anything more than providing a, a pack, pack, well-packaged placebo, then we can save a lot of money and just give the placebo. Um, yes. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it, it, I mean, it's important in terms of investment in medicine to know if their drugs actually are having genuine, uh, genuine in the sense of physiological or pharmacological effects other than those which operate through yeah. the mind. I mean, and of course, I mean, I don't want to get, get the wrong impression. Many drugs really do work at those levels, but they're almost always uh, insofar as the patient knows this drug is meant to be effective, there's going to be a placebo effect as well. Mm. And it wouldn't work to have a bottle with placebo written across it. Um, well, actually, your friend, uh, it, maybe, maybe it would. Well, it um, it, yes. it, you used to be able to buy placebos. But we, actually we, written placebo, but I mean... Well, we, well in, in, the, in the pharmacopoeias, you could buy placebos. Um, and what the, how the doctor administered them, I'm, I'm not quite sure. He would have seemed to say, you know, yes. you know, Madam, I think this, you know, yes. take yes. it my word, this will do you good. Yes. <laughs> I mean, I can't imagine going to a chemist shop and, and, and asking for a bottle of placebo for myself. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, <laughs> why not? I'd try it. Well, well, maybe I work. should try it, yes. <laughs> yeah. okay. How far do you think so-called alternative practitioners believe the mumbo-jumbo that they, that they say is the theory behind their potions? And how far do they know that it's a placebo? Are, are they deceiving or are they self-deceiving? I think in many cases they're, they're self-deceiving. Well, it's not even self-deceiving. They have seen in their own experience that these treatments work, so they believe in them. Um, they have then to invent a rationale and then all sorts of nonsense may come, we'll go towards providing them with you know, some spiritual or magical explanation of what they're doing. But I think they believe in what they're doing because what they're doing evidently works. Um, and you know, supposing you were a miracle worker in the two or three thousand years ago, supposing we were Jesus and seeing that you know, lame men got up and walked when you told them to, you'd be rather impressed with yourself, wouldn't you? <laughs> um, yes. Um, and but I'm sure it was yeah. a placebo effect. Yes, mm. quite, yes. Mm. Good, thank you very much. What, what's your view of, um, the, of current uh, experiments at, uh, purporting to demonstrate telepathy? Well, I'm completely unpersuaded by any scientific evidence. Um, I, I can't say I've looked into every experiment, but the ones I've done, almost in, well, in every case, have turned out to have flaws in design, um, which explain why the data could have been suggesting to the, the experimenters that there was a paranormal effect, but which could be could be explained by in alternative ways. Um, 